Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis, the channel where we look at complex organic chemistry and explain how it works. This week we are looking at part 2 of the synthesis of how amine A by the Chen group. Last week we looked at the synthesis of the first fragment, a highly functionalized amino alcohol compound. Today we are going to complete the synthesis by looking at the construction of the second fragment and the end game where they tie it all together. We covered the retrosynthesis in last week's video, so let's jump straight into the construction of fragment 2. This started with an alkyl cyclohexanone and a Barton hydrazone iodination reaction. Reaction of the ketone group with hydrazine formed a hydrazone. This was iodinated using iodine and triethylamine as a base. Further iodination of the carbon centre and the deprotonation of the alpha hydrogen promoted the elimination of nitrogen gas and yielded the target vinyl iodide. This vinyl iodide species then took part in a CH alkenylation reaction utilising a quinolinamide group which directs the CH activation. The first step is the coordination of a palladium acetate catalyst. The appended directing group directs the palladium catalyst towards the para position of the methoxyphenyl ring. Insertion of palladium into the carbon hydrogen bond generates the activated species. This undergoes an oxidative insertion reaction with the vinyl iodide species to form a palladium 4 complex. Reductive elimination forms the desired carbon carbon bond and regenerates the palladium 2 catalyst. With this bond construction complete, the directing group was then hydrolyzed. This was a two stage process. First, a Bok group was added to the amide nitrogen. This makes the amide more electrophilic and therefore easier to hydrolyze. As the Bok group is not base labile, this ensured that the carbon nitrogen bond was selectively hydrolyzed over the amide ester bond. Overall, this liberated the target carboxylic acid fragment. With the two fragments now complete, the authors could move into the end game of the synthesis. The coupling of the two fragments was realized using an amide coupling. The carboxylic acid was reacted with base to generate the carboxylate nucleophile, which was reacted with EDC to form an acyl isourea complex. This is a highly reactive electrophile and reacted with the amine of the first fragment to form an amide bond. The next step was to oxidize the primary alcohol. This was done using desmartin periodinane, which we've seen several times before. Attack of the hydroxyl group in the hypervalent iodine center creates a new iodine oxygen bond. The liberated acetate can act as a base, which deprotonates the geminal hydrogen, which completes the oxidation of the alcohol to an aldehyde. With the aldehyde installed, they could then proceed to an intramolecular aldol condensation to form a new ring. Cesium carbonate was used as a base, which deprotonated the alpha position of the amide to generate the enolate nucleophile, which then attacked the electrophilic aldehyde. The resulting alcohol was then eliminated in an E1CB fashion, which generated the desired double bond. In preparation for the macrocyclization reaction, a functional group interconversion was then carried out on the alkyl chain. The TBS group was deprotected using TBAF to yield the alcohol which was then reacted with tosyl chloride to convert it to a tosylate, which is a more reactive leaving group. The nucleophilic nitrogen also had to be prepared. This was done by reducing the amide to yield a nucleophilic secondary amine. The reduction was carried out using a transfer hydrogenation process using triurethenium dodecacarbonyl and tetramethyl disiloxane. Reaction of the ruthenium catalyst with the siloxane species 
generated a ruthenium hydride. This could coordinate to the amide group and transfer this hydride to the carbon atom. Successive hydride transfer was successful in reducing the amide down to the amine. With both the amine and the TOS slate installed, the authors could then carry out the key macrocyclization reaction. The authors found that the addition of sodium iodide to the reaction was essential for success. Sodium iodide can act as a nucleophilic catalyst, where it first acts as a nucleophile to displace the TOS layer group and generate an alkyl iodide. Nucleophilic attack of the secondary amine to this alkyl iodide species generates the target macrocycle. This undergoes an SN2 mechanism where the nitrogen adds at the same time as the iodide leaves. This reaction was carried out under quite dilute conditions, 0 0.002 molar. Using dilute conditions is a common strategy in the synthesis of macrocycles. By diluting the reaction, it favours the intramolecular reaction to form a macrocycle rather than an intermolecular reaction to form a dimer. The formation of dimers is a significant problem in the synthesis of macrocycles, as typically there is a higher entropy barrier to form the transition state for a macrocycle compared to the dimer. The role of the sodium iodide might be important in this respect also. It is common that ions, such as sodium or iodide, can also act as templates to form these ordered transition states and promote the intramolecular macrocyclization compared to dimers. However, no studies were done which could provide evidence to support this hypothesis. Another important feature of this macrocyclization reaction is the use of a flexible alkyl chain with sp3 carbon centers. The flexibility in this chain allows the transition state to be formed more easily. If the authors had used the aromatic ring in place of the cyclohexene, it is likely that the transition state couldn't form as there isn't enough flexibility within the system. With the macrocycle in hand, the authors then turned their attention towards the next key step of this synthesis, which was an allylic oxidation using selenium dioxide. The authors screened many oxidation conditions and found that this Riley oxidation was the most successful and selective. Interestingly, they found that this oxidation was highly accelerated by the strain within the system when they compared to model systems which didn't have the strain introduced in the ring. This reaction proceeds through a pericyclic ene type reaction mechanism. The selenium dioxide adds to the double bond in a concerted mechanism together with a 1,5 hydrogen shift. The selenium bound oxygen adds to the new double bond and pushes its migration back to the original position. The selenium group is hydrolyzed upon workup to produce the desired allylic alcohol. The authors found that this reaction exhibited high regioselectivity and chemoselectivity. This arose from the high functionality present in the molecule. The alkene on the nitrogen bearing ring is shielded on both faces by steric hindrance from the rest of the molecule. Likewise, this ring blocks the bottom face of the target alkene, allowing the selenium oxide to only access the top face. The accelerated reactivity introduced by the ring strain further favours this reaction. Continuing the late stage oxidation processes, the authors then used a PCC oxidation to oxidise the hydroxyl group to a ketone. Pyridinium chlorochromate acts as a more selective alternative to the Collins reagent. The chromium complex binds to the oxygen, making it more electrophilic, and the chloride can act as a base which deprotonates the geminal position to produce the target ketone. With the enone installed, the authors proceeded to the final key reaction of the synthesis. This is the aromatization of the enone ring. First, they formed an enolate using LIHDMS, and this was reacted with N-terbutyl benzene sulfinamidyl chloride. 
This binds in the alpha position and deprotonates the beta hydride, oxidizing the ring and forming a new double bond. This dienone ring rapidly undergoes a ketoenol tautomerization to produce the highly strained yet aromatic phenol ring. Boron tribromide was then used to complete the synthesis. This reacted with the methylene ethers present on the molecule and unmasked the other phenol rings, completing the total synthesis of haumine A. In summary, a new synthetic approach to the synthesis of the cyclophane alkaloid haumine A has been completed. Highlights of this synthesis are the late stage and highly selective strain accelerated oxidation reactions, the intramolecular alkylation to form the macrocycle, and rhodium catalyzed diazo insertion and aziridination reactions. It is a highly modular synthetic approach to a challenging target and offers a lot of scope for variation into the substrates used for the synthesis and will allow scientists to explore the Haumine family further. The methodology developed for this synthesis will no doubt be employed to synthesize other highly strained cyclophane type molecules. That's everything for this week's episode of Simplifying Synthesis. If you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. And if you have anything you want to see, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll be back again next week, and this time it will be a lecture on ring-closing reactions and Baldwin's rules.